Hi, I'm Mathalika Little. I'm a novelist and a short story writer. I write across genres uh, which includes uh, humor, historical, detective, and also some non-genre. Today I'm going to be reading part of a story from my collection Woman to Woman. This was published by Speaking Tiger in 2017. It's a collection of short stories, each of which has a focus on a woman or a girl. Uh, the story I'm going to be reading from is called Collector of Junk. Kanlu was a hanger on outside the flour mill. He couldn't have been old, perhaps in his mid thirties, but he had a shock of grey hair and wore a perpetually harassed look that made him appear much older. I didn't ever see Kallu go inside the mill, but now and then someone, usually the watchman at the gate, would summon him. There would be a muted conversation and Kallu would go off down the street on an errand. It's a hard life, Amma, he would say. She was not his mother, but he still called her Amma. I resented it. They will not give me a job, even though I have pleaded and promised. It was a mistake. Amma, I knew it even then. I would turn back time if I could, but they will not forgive me. Amma would go on with her work, and I, glancing sideways, trying not to let them notice me eavesdropping, would wonder if her tears were because of the onions she was chopping or because she felt sorry for Kallu. Everybody should be allowed a second chance, Amma, Kallu would say, and Amma would nod. Yes, she would say, or no. Whatever it took to let Kallu know she was listening. And look, they do call me every now and then to do something for them. If they can trust me to do that, why not give me a job, huh? Amma would nod, and if her hands were not greasy or stained with turmeric, or wet with tomato juice, she would pat him on the knee of his shapeless frayed trousers. I would gloat silently, not for Kallu or Amma's warm hugs, her brusquely affectionate way of wiping away tears, or oh, kisses when I hurt myself. Those were all mine, and I guarded them jealously. Kallu had to be content with a brief pat on the knee now and then. Why does he come and complain to you, Amma? I asked once, when I was about twelve. Old enough to have an opinion on what went on around me. Old enough even to consider my opinion worth airing. It's not complaining, just talking. Amma was grinding ginger and garlic, and the smell rose strong and sharp from the massive grinding stone. But he's telling you all the time about how bad things are for him. What's wrong? What happened to Kallu? Why is he so... I grope for a word my vocabulary and experience, not yet able to find expressions for things so elusive. So strange. Kallu is not strange, Amma said. He just has his problems. All of us do. Amma and I certainly had our problems. The little two yards by two tin shed we called home, baked in the summer, clattered and leaked in the monsoon and did little to keep out the cold in the winter. All our clothes were hand-me-downs. Our food was invariably the last bits of whatever had been left over from Amma's lunchtime sales of dal and rice, vegetables and rotis. Yes, we had our troubles, but Amma never spoke of them. Who would she speak to? I was too young to understand, and we had no relatives. Our neighbours, their roofs covered with tarpaulins, weighed down with neighbours with bricks, their children running snotty-nosed and naked in the lane behind. The men sprawling and drinking cheap country liquor in the evening. They had more troubles than we did. Or so Amma said. And so too I could hear and see for myself. He beats me, Amma, Kusum would say, when she came by now and then, lowering herself onto the charpai. She must have been pretty once. But six years of wedded life and four children had wrung all semblance of beauty away. The bruises on her face, the scars on her arm. Her husband's favourite means of chastising his wife was to press the end of a smouldering beery on her arm. All were proof of what Kusum went through. She would sit opposite Amma, hugging herself and talking about her husband, her children, the pain, the suffering. Never once did she offer to help Amma, even though Amma would be working. Working all the time, washing clothes, sweeping, mending a torn garment. No, Kusum would not help. Kusum would sit and mourn. As would all the others, they each had their own miseries. Some were like Kusum, battered and marked with wounds that shouted out their tales of woe. Others bore sorrows less visible. Shampu, for instance, who used to come every Sunday when the mill was closed and Amma wheeled the food stall and set it up closer to home. Shampu used to sell vegetables. 
limp spinach and yellowing cucumbers, onions streaked with black, and tomatoes that were either too green or too pulpy. I cannot afford good vegetables, he would say to Amma, as he spread out his wares on the ragged tarpaulin next to Amma's stall. You know how it is, Amma. You know what I've been through. What has he been through, Amma? I whispered one day when Chandu had gone off to a square of tarpaulin to attend to one of his rare customers, a woman who looked as if she couldn't even afford what Chandu had to sell. None of your business, Munni. But you know, don't you, Amma? Why don't you tell me? Maybe we can do something to help. She shook her head. He isn't looking for help. Just someone to listen. I hope you will buy the book and read the rest of the story and read the rest of the other stories as well. Uh, and before I go, I'd like to give you one little piece of positivity. Please stay calm, stay well, stay safe. And remember, this too shall pass.